Hey guys, Outdoor Prepper, welcome back to the channel. If you saw my last video about the drone, you'll know that I picked up this really cool DJI Mini 4 Pro from South Korea. The experience was great. I'm going to post a link to that video in case you're thinking of getting one yourself. But unfortunately, I want to talk about what happened. I took this DJI Mini 4 Pro out flying last night at night for the first time and the last time. This is what happened. And I'm going to show you in just a second what the drone hit. But stay tuned until the end of the video because then I'm going to really explain exactly why this happened and how you can avoid it. This video is only 10 minutes long, but it's really important information on how you can avoid this because of why this happened. As you can see from the image on your screen, this is the building that I was flying over last night. And when I say nighttime, it was about 9 o'clock, so it was not fully dark, but it was fairly dark. I mean, you could still see and I raised the drone to what I believed was a more than sufficient height to clear the building and just as I was heading out to go over the building to go film something all of a sudden the whole control of the screen went chaotic I could see the image of the drone falling and I was probably about 500 feet or so from the building I was across the street I was in a park and I was just trying to get over the building to get some cool shots and I immediately looked up and saw the drone falling but then it just went black and I couldn't really see where it went and as you can see on this building here there's this large scaffolding with mesh all over the building so it made it really really difficult for me to actually locate the drone I hit the find my drone button I tried to sound the, the audible and lights but the controller lost contact with the drone which got me immediately concerned that you know the battery came out and I'll, I'll never be able to find it etc etc so what I did was I started looking all around the area with a, a flashlight and I, I scoured the area I even climbed onto the roof of my car to get a better vantage point to look onto the scaffolding to see if maybe it had fallen there I just couldn't find it anywhere and I basically left that night and went home distraught that my very expensive really cool drone was missing so the next morning I got a phone call from the super of that building and they had found the drone because I had reached out to them that night and basically said hey I hit your building uh, if you find the drone can you please let me know and I'm gonna get to why this is all important and where we're going with this in just a second so the super called and said we found your drone you want to come pick it up so I went to pick it up and guys this is this is what it looks like let me pull the camera in close so you can really see what's going on here with the drone and long story very short the drone is destroyed it literally it will power on but aside from powering on it really will not do anything so let's take a look as we can see the shell appears to be okay but what is not very visible in the camera is that the whole top of the shell had basically separated and I've tried to the best of my ability to snap it back into place uh, but it will just simply not snap into place in many locations I've lost part of a propeller blade the tip there is missing other blades are damaged this piece of the arm is actually totally falling off and it's very difficult to even try to fold uh, the arm in from the underside there's no real damage to the underside from the camera though you can see I'm missing the whole front of the camera and basically this is the problem right here if you can see this the gimbal which is one of the most costly pieces of the drone is totally not calibrated not aligned and you can turn the drone on and when the drone turns on you'll see the gimbal tries to go through a self-check but what happens is it ends up staying in this basically broken position and actually did not even try to do it oh here we go so that is not calibrated and when you connect the controller the controller will connect for about a minute before it throws an error and says it can't connect um, it'll give you a bunch of gimbal errors you can try to fight the motor but it's always going to go off calibration and I have tried every possible way to resolve this it is just simply not functioning I can't adjust the gimbal from the controller uh, I can't get the gimbal to line up straight I can't start the drone uh, I can only connect the drone for about a minute and so it is just unfortunately not working out the way that I had planned so I reached out to a couple of folks that do drone repairs. Uh, they all gave me the unfortunate news, which is that 
If the gimbal is damaged and or destroyed, it's going to be a very costly repair. And more so than that, they don't have the software to calibrate the gimbal. That is something that DJI has to do. And we'll talk in the next video about DJI care uh, and what happened with that. So where this video is going is the reason you have to be careful and the problem with flying this drone at night is very simple. These collision avoidance sensors, which I was relying on, because as I was approaching that building, I knew I had the collision avoidance sensors on, and I figured if I was at just a little bit too low of an altitude, it would have adjusted and taken care of that. Guys, they don't work at night. Or let me rephrase it and say, they don't work very well at night. They actually need light. This unit does not have LiDAR, like the more expensive air units. So if you're flying this at night, you really, 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 really need to be careful because look what happened to me. Guys, the crux of this story is that I put too much faith in the sensors. And I knew I was coming up upon a building. I knew it was dark, but I figured, you know, this drone obviously works in the dark. It has lights on it. I'm sure the sensors can pick up the building at night, but they didn't. I got close to the scaffold. Obviously, I hit it. There was a mesh in front of the scaffold, as you can see from the pictures earlier, and the sensors failed me. They failed me so much so that my over $1,000 drone is literally a paperweight. And like I said, I reached out to many folks to try to get this repaired. I have not had any success. Um, I'm going to do a follow-up video on the experience with DJI Care because I had a lot of questions about, well, why can't you just get DJI Care on this drone and that'll handle all your problems? Well, I tried and I'm going to tell you exactly what happened when I went to take the drone that I bought in South Korea and register it for DJI Care. I think you're going to be very, very surprised about the issue and it is not what you think. You're probably thinking, well, you bought it from South Korea, so that's why. That is not the issue. But that's a topic for a different video, which I will link to this. Guys, heed the warning. If you have a DJI 4 Mini Pro, you can fly it at night. Do not rely on these sensors. These sensors will not protect you at night. And many individuals will say, well, they're not good at picking up branches and leaves. I flew into a 100 foot tall concrete building. This is not branches and leaves. These sensors absolutely should have seen the building. They should have gone over it or stopped it. It just flew directly into it as if the building was not even there. So unfortunately, they did not perform as I thought they would, but I guess they did perform as they were designed. And nighttime is really not the time to be flying it if you've got buildings in your path. Guys, check out the next video and we're gonna talk about the whole DJI Care situation because I think that if you're going to buy a drone from South Korea or really anywhere, you're going to want to know this important information. Now guys, I know a lot of you probably find this very interesting. So I'm going to show you here how it's actually not even connecting any longer. And I don't know if maybe it was an internal antenna that was damaged in addition to some ribbon cables and obviously the gimbal. But when I fire up the controller and I took the joysticks off, um, I can't even connect to the aircraft any longer. And this is just extremely, extremely unfortunate. Um, that it won't do that. So unfortunately I am left with a very nice controller and a very non-functioning drone that you know will turn on a little power off but beyond that it won't do much more. So I am going to continue to try and see how I can get this repaired and I'm going to show you all the issues with trying to get this repaired and how it ultimately ends up as well as the whole situation with DJI care on the next video. Thanks for watching. Say a prayer for the drone. Wake and funeral arrangements are being made and internment is going to be at the Electronic Recycling Center.